seven. Lesbians that always is, last. Lesbians are always last. You've got to set up. You've got the most of your happy. Hey girls, are y'all ready? Almost. Camera. Lights. Yep, we're ready. Ready to Sam, roll. Sam, get with me. You with me? Say yes. Jim Stone, Channel 4, Bakersfield. Hi, we're here today to shoot a demo for a brand new band. It's just hit the rock and roll scene here locally. And one of the unique things about this band is that they're all women and they're all over the age of 50. And we're going to find out the story about why these women have come to rock and roll at this point in life. So, hi. Hi. Now, which one are you? I'm Melanie. Melanie? Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, mellow dramatic. Oh, mellow dramatic. Well, I'm going to stay with Melanie. Thank you. So tell me, how, did, how is it that you are in a rock and roll band? <laughs> As a late bloomer. <laughs> um, well, I, I actually, I grew up in a family of musicians. My mother and father were both classically trained. Uh, dad played piano and mom played cello. And so uh, when I was a little girl, I showed a, a small amount of talent on the violin. They got very excited about that, very excited. And so that's when it all started and there was a lot of pressure as I got older to perform and um, be the little prodigy and virtuoso that they had pictured for themselves and uh, it's it's almost like I lived someone else's life up until fairly recently but I'll continue the story um, by the time I was a um, preteen I was meant to perform and I was very anxious about that I'm not a natural um, so you didn't get that from your folks? No, and so they took me to a psychiatrist and they got some pills for me for my anxiety. And so I learned early to, you know, to manage my state with chemicals. And then when I got to the conservatory, then there was more pressure, more performing, more pressure, and a lot more chemicals. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that just got to be more complicated, and, and I continued on a, a career. Um, in, in classical music. Classical, yeah, as a violinist. As far as I could go along that trajectory of, you know, drugs and, and chemicals and pressure and insanity and living a life that really wasn't mine. Particularly, I think my soul had fled at an early point. And um, I ended up just imploding. Well, all of it was too much for my body somehow. I had a complete breakdown, like everything just blew out, <laughs> and, I, and I was, I found myself in a, um, in a psych ward, not knowing who I was, or how to play the violin, or much of anything, and it took a lot of years to, uh, to come back from that, um, and I'm not that person anymore, I get to be me now, um, so the girls in the band has been a total gift for me as I rediscover the violin, the fiddle, I play the fiddle now, the don't play the violin. And, um, and I love the instrument. It's so um, yummy. It's a sensual instrument. It feels good to play. And relearning it by ear, playing rock, it's perfect. And the girls are patient with me and they're <laughs> very supportive. It's, I couldn't have a better group of women. I've had a lot of help, um, you know, coming back to myself. And, uh, and I'm just really grateful. It's really fun. Plus the electric guitar, you know, strap on is and cool. Rock and roll. <laughs> Rock and roll, yeah. Bless well, I'm just, I'm just so grateful to be here. And it's just so much, such a blast working with these women. They're just really super talented and, and fun, brilliant people. That's fantastic. Well, thanks so much for sharing your story with me. Thank you. Right. Nice to meet you. Sure, you bet. Can't wait to see the show. <laughs> yeah. I hope, hope you're not disappointed. Jenny, you're up. Yeah. You're up. Hi. Hi. Have a seat. Right here. So you're Jenny? Yeah. I'm Jenny. Hi, nice to meet you. Well, so Jenny, tell me about how it is that you're in a rock and roll band. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Huh? Yeah. 
uh, well, I was, I was always really shy, and, um, you know, the guitar was just my best friend. I always just wanted to hang out in my bedroom and play guitar, and my parents wanted me to be more outgoing, and were always trying to get me to read all these motivational books, but my guitar is my best friend, so I would just come home from school all the time and just hang out there. And um, what? Actually, one day my dad, he, he said, well, why don't you join the marching band or something at school? You know, I don't know how you do that with a guitar, but he talked to the band instructor, and the band instructor said, well, after, after football season, you can come play in the jazz band. So I did that. How was that? How was, how was playing in the jazz? It, that was good. Um, it was really good, yeah. And I started meeting, you know, more of my peers, and that's kind of what my family wanted. But, you know, I still just kind of like my guitar. <laughs> and, just, and um, but the band, the band leader actually, he thought I had some talent, and he told me to try the classical guitar. So I picked that up. And anyway, once once I did that, it was it was just wonderful. And I I go on stage and. I don't know, I was like I was a different person. I just became so engrossed in the music, you know, and I'd forget about the crowd and all that shyness. So you were, you were playing classical with the, with the jazz band? Well, no, no, I did the jazz band and then the, you know, I just moved on and, oh, okay. and just started doing other stuff. And then the classical thing was really just my next deal that I did. And you know, one day, um, actually one day I was backstage and this guy, he was really cute, he came backstage, this guy, and he said, he wanted me to teach him his technique, and um, he was uh, a country, like a country singer. And he was just like me, you know. He always just wanted to hang out with his guitar, and he was said he was kind of shy, and I don't know, he was like my soulmate. I just knew that right from the beginning. Yeah. And he wanted you to teach him how to how to, how to play. Like yeah, he, he said he wanted me to teach him um, classical guitar, but you know. Sounds like there's a little romance. There. Yeah, there was. Yeah, he was my soulmate. We got married, and he was a wonderful husband, great father. And uh, we did a lot of music together. And, but, you know, life goes on, and actually he passed away. Oh, so. Yeah. So um, now I have, I have two guitars and all of our different instruments, and this, I, um, I have his guitar strap I always take with me on stage. So that's kind of a piece of him. So he's still performing yeah, 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 he's with me, yeah. That's cool. So, so how is it that you came to be in this band, these kids? Well, Sarah Lee, I just, you know, knew her through the different music groups and stuff, and nobody can resist her. <laughs> I mean, if she asks you to do something, you just say yes, right? <laughs> I guess, I'll make yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, so I ended up with her, and it's just a bit of a blast. Yeah. So cool. Thanks so much okay. for sharing your story. A great show to me. Yeah, I think we will. I'm really excited. Fantastic. I can't wait. Okay. Casey. Casey, I think it's your turn. Hi there. Hi. I'm Jeff. Casey. Hi, Casey. Hi, how are you? I'm well. Well, so you're one of the girls in the band. I am. Tell me about being in a rock and roll band. <laughs> well, I always loved singing. Actually, I sang all the time. My parents would tell everybody I was such a happy child, and that's why I sang. And I guess I was happy because, you know, my family was there for me, and they supported me, and they made a big fuss when I would come home with straight A's, so I was a good girl, and, and um, they came to my cheerleading events, I was in a lot of plays, they were very supportive. And, um, and then, I made a big mistake and my life changed. And, um, well, why did I do it? Ask any teenager. Hormones, 17, um, wanted to go steady, have a boyfriend, and I was fortunate. I had the big man on campus, the big jock who loved me. And, you know, one night, we went off to a movie, and then we did what teenagers do. We drove up to the ridge, and one thing led to another, and it was the inevitable happened. So, I got pregnant, and life took a turn from there. 
Fortunately, the guy's parents were not very interested in me messing up his life, and they felt like they weren't going to give a name to the baby, and so they offered me money for an mm -hmm. abortion. And, um, fortunately, my supportive parents, in spite of all the rage and outrage of their friends and their good girl messing up the reputation. Um, my parents actually amazingly said, look, we'll give the baby our name and we'll raise the child and we want you to go off to college and have a life. So that's what happened. So I went off, went to college, started singing again found my voice again, and found my way to some bands, played in some discos with some groups, and you know, um, then one night, one of the musicians in one of the bands came up to me and he said, you really ought to sing solo, and I'd love to play and get to know you more, and so we started hanging out after sessions, and playing guitar and singing together, and um, we became inseparable. <laughs> and he was a struggling chemist, you know, musician at night, but trying to make a living. And he said to me one night, if I, you know, invent something, I get rich, I'll marry you. And I said, sounds good. And um, it actually happened. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> he invented this funky sealant that, you know, made millions and millions of dollars. And so we gave up playing in great clubs and ended up hanging out in a different life. Country clubs, society clubs, East Coast High Society, and um, then he finally retired, moved out west where he wanted to be in a big old ranch, and uh, I, you know, I, I enjoyed the peace of the big open space, but one day I just realized I just couldn't do that anymore, and uh, asked the big question, what do I want, who am I, and I want something. I don't have. So I decided to head down and join the church locally in the little town I was in, and that's actually where I met Mel. She was a piano player and just fell in love with her and, and said, come on to my house, and my husband would get his guitar out, and we three of us would sit around and sing, and I got this big old fantasy going in my head about, I always dreamed of having a girl's rock band and being in a rock band. And, um, so one day I said to Mel, what do you think? And she goes, why not? So you're the trouble. <laughs> I'm part of the instigation of it. And um, fortunately, my husband said, yeah, go for it. And he didn't stand in my way. And Mel said, I've got some friends. Let's call up Sarah Lee. And she's got some friends. And here we are. And I'm so excited about tonight. And it feels like a whole coming around in a, in a lifetime, so I kind of feel 17 again. <laughs> well, I hope you have a fantastic show. Tonight. Thank you. So, rock and roll. Tonight's a night. Yeah. Have a great show. Thank and you. Thanks for sharing your story. Nice to meet you. Send somebody else back. <laughs> Sarah Lee, it's up to you. It's your turn. Uh, Sarah Lee. I'm Sarah Lee. I'm Sarah Lee. I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's see. So, nice night, the big premiere. Girls in the band. Yeah. Tell me about it. Wait till you see it. Wait till you see what I'm wearing tonight. <laughs> Are you going to be there? I wouldn't miss it. Yeah. So, what, what brings you to rock and roll with this? Uh, you want that? <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Uh, what brings me to rock and roll? Yeah. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I write music. Yeah. You want to hear my story? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Sarah Lee, my dad named me Sarah Lee because uh, he said I was sweet as cake. And I, I love my name. I think of my dad every time anybody says it, so it's pretty cool. 
but uh, uh, it took me a long time to get here. You know, uh, we all have our story, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here. I'm excited about tonight. It's going to be great. Um, I guess you know we all veer off some paths. And I grew up in a musical family. My dad played the concert piano. My mom played the cello. They taught me how to play music, and I was surrounded by it my whole life. It was beautiful, and I swore that I'd be a musician just like them. You know, my whole life. That's all I thought about. I was pretty focused, just like that. And that, that's what I was going to do. Um, you know, and. In high school, you know how that goes. Uh, everybody takes a, a little bit of a turn here and there, trying to figure out what they really want. And I was, I was very much focused, and then it was like night and day. I, I can't explain it to you other than somewhere in my senior year, I discovered I was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really liked all of a sudden like wearing the lacy bras and the lacy panties and discovering my body and discovering that boys were attracted to me, and I, up until then, I really hadn't noticed that before, and I, I liked the attraction, I liked the, all of the attention they started giving me, so, uh, instead of just kind of taking it in stride, I kind of went over the edge, and boy crazy, I mean, way boy crazy, and I'd go out of the house in the morning, and I'd roll up my skirt, and pull my tops down, and put a lot of extra makeup on, boys would be whistling at me, and saying, come here, Sarah Lee, I want to talk to you, that kind of thing. <laughs> and I, you know, up until that point, I hadn't had that, so I kind of reveled in it. I, I really went that direction. And music, at that point, kind of took a back seat, you know, because this was a lot more fun at that point. And I, that's what I was in it for. I was going to have fun. I'm, my parents started arguing. My dad's like, what? Pull your shirt up. You don't need to expose yourself so much. And my mom was on the other side saying, let her be herself. She's just an expression. It's self-expression, you know, and um, she wants to be an individual. And so I took my mom's side and I, I kept it up. And honestly, you know, when I look back, I mean, I, I was dressing like a slut. And I got a reputation. I started going to parties with all the boys and the girls who were all, you know, in the fast lane. And it didn't bother me. I thought, yeah, you know, so what? I, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. So we'd party all the time go out on weekends and stuff. And, you know, it, uh, uh, okay, do you mind? No, go ahead. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Um, you know, a little bit into my senior year, probably uh, right around Christmas, I was at a party at my girlfriend's house, and I think I had all the boys that we were hanging out with, I, I must have kissed you know, a dozen of them, <laughs> these parties. But, I, and even though I had the reputation that I was a sled, kind of a school whore, just like all these girls, I wasn't sleeping with anybody. I was just having fun. I parked my car down the street, and um, there's this one boy in the group that I didn't particularly care for. He was kind of a mean guy, got in a lot of fights and stuff. And I noticed that night that he was kind of eyeing me, and um, I felt uncomfortable, so I, I decided to leave early. I had a couple beers, and I was on my way out, and he uh, followed me, walked me to my car, and um, started forcing himself on me. And I, you know, I just pushed him away. I said, "Hey, get out of here, Derek!" You know. Um, and I tried to get in my car, and he, he grabbed me, and he took me around the other side, and he and pushed himself on me again. I said, "Hey, you know, I want to go home. Leave me alone." And uh, he put out a switchblade. And he put it to my neck. He said, Sarah Lee, you're always flirting and you're always, you know, think you're all that. Everybody thinks that you're out here doing everybody well. I'm going to make you the slut that everybody thinks you are. And I, I just said, don't, you know, no. No. And uh, he didn't listen. He, he put it to my neck and he said, don't say a word. Don't scream or nothing. He shoved me down on the ground, and I, I just started crying. And uh, he started doing his thing. Uh, my girlfriend, whose party was at, she, for some reason, all of a sudden, 
said she had to come and find me and she doesn't know why. She just said, all of a sudden, she, I had to find you. And she came out and she, she was looking for me. She said, where's Sarah Lee? And they said she left. And so she came out to the truck and the truck was still there. And, you know, thank God she came in and heard all this noise out there. And even though he said, don't say a thing, don't shh, she came around and she yelled at him, the fuck are you doing? And he got up and you know, ran as fast as he could, and by that time everybody had come out, and I was, I was there, and everybody saw me. I don't know what they thought. Uh, my girlfriend took me home. It was awful. It was terrible. Worst point in my life, and uh, I think my passion died at that point. I had a hard time going back to school. My girlfriend, she stood by me, but I didn't see anybody else. I didn't hang out with anybody else, and I certainly didn't wear those kind of clothes. And People talked about me at school. It was awful. It was terrible. I don't even know how I made it. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm telling you all this because it, it just makes a difference about why my life Oh, well, I want to end. Yeah. I'm yeah. To yeah. And um, my mom, she was my champion. She stayed by me. My dad. Made sure that guy was arrested and he was put away for good. They stood by me and they said, you got to go on, you, you know. So somehow, even though I was out of it, I really didn't care anymore. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to do anything. They took care of it. They got me in. I got a, I got a scholarship, and I, a music scholarship, and I went away to college at that point. Um, uh, that's what saved me. I got out of, I got out of that town. Got out of all that reputation stuff and uh, started my new life. And even though I, you know, I was pretty withdrawn, I didn't really want to be around too many people. Once in a while, I I go to a party, and I don't know. I almost through my freshman year, I went to this one party, and I was just sitting by myself on a couch, not paying any attention. And um, this one really nice-looking guy, he came over and he kept making an effort. And he, you know, he, he tried to hold my hand, and I pulled it back, and then he grabbed the, uh, grabbed the other one. And I, I had to give him some credit for persevering, because I didn't want anything to do with him. And uh, it was great. He would told me his whole story. He told me what his plans were for the future, and what he wanted to do. And he was an engineer, and he had all this money saved, and he was a senior. He was graduating in June. And uh, I let him take me out on a date, and he fell in love. And pursued me, and he pretty much reminded me of my dad and my brother, and I felt safe. Yeah. There was where I felt safe, and I think he probably saved me. We got married. I dropped out of school, um, five kids, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think probably a lot of that was my recovery from what had happened to me. I felt completely protected and safe, very loved. My kids are grown. I taught them all how to play music. Beautiful. I've had a beautiful life, you know. And I played, I wrote a lot of music during this time, too. I, I probably used it as therapy to get through all this kind of stuff. And, uh, um, you know, I met these girls, uh, Melanie in particular. Right, right, right. Even though I was this kind of closet songwriter, she, she was my friend and she was playing all the time and she just, one day, one, one day she said, well, let me hear one of your songs. And I said, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. She goes, yeah, come on, let me hear it. So I played one for her, and she went crazy. She said, my god, Sarah Lee, you got to join the band. And I'm like, no, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and she said, yeah, you got to play. That song's amazing. you got to be in this band. And I think being around her and starting in the band, my passion came back. It, all the girls surrounded me. They loved me. We love each other. Brought my passion back for music, and that's how I feel. I'm gonna I'm gonna play one of my songs tonight. Oh, great, great. So you'll hear it, and uh, I feel I feel completely awesome to be a part of this band, and so excited just to get out there and you know rock and roll. Nice. It's very cool. <laughs> that's very good. Cool. Yeah. So thanks for listening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. There's cool. one more. <laughs> in your band I haven't spoken to you. Oh yeah, uh, Billy? Yeah.
Your turn. You want right. to drink? I'm you wanna, ready. You want I am get so your beer? ready. Want me to get your beer, huh? Yes, please. All right. I'm, I'm going to guess this is the drummer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's awesome, man. Yeah. Let's do this. All right. She rocks. Thank you. All right. We'll Good see. Good show tonight. All right. Cool. All right, Sarah. Get your here, coat for you. Stuff. Here you go. Did you want this gum uh -huh. back? Yeah, here. I'll take it. <laughs> You're so nice. Thank you. So, Billy. Jack, nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I've always wanted to be in a rock and roll band, but most of the time when I was growing up, uh, my mom wanted a girl, my dad wanted a boy. Well, unbeknownst to them, I kind of came out as a girl, but I am a, a lesbian. My mom would always try to curl my hair, and I'd <laughs> comb it out, and then she'd try to curl it again. It was just like, no, Mom, I'm, I, my, this is not me. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, she'd take me shopping and uh, make me try on all these frilly little girl dresses. And I was like, I didn't want anything to do with that. All I wanted to do was put on a pair of jeans, t-shirt, you know, and a plaid shirt. But um, she kept saying, well, you have such a nice body. You have such nice breasts. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I didn't mind having breasts. You know, that wasn't the problem. Um, I hung out with a lot of guys at you know, because I was such a tomboy, and uh, they would never make fun of me having breasts because I beat the hell out of them <laughs> if they did. Um, my mom did want me to play music. Um, she was a great piano player, very classy and graceful at it, and she insisted that um, I should be like her and play some kind of instrument. Well, the drums were not my particular uh, Thing that my mom wanted me to play, but with my dad's encouragement and talking to my mom, uh, he basically told her, well, at least she's going to be playing an instrument and concentrating on, you know, something other than, you know, what I really wanted to do was that was just go chase around and have a good time. Um, I spent a lot of time hanging out with my dad, watching football games and, and going fishing, you know, because I really dug that stuff, but my true passion was soccer. I mean, drums and soccer. And I was so good at it that um, I got a scholarship, a full scholarship, to go to school. And so I, I pursued that and, you know, just ran that ball up and down that field and, you know, just pushed everybody that was in my way. Um, also, when I was in college, I met this beautiful woman. And I really wanted to tell her how I felt. But I, I couldn't because she was such a beautiful angel and I didn't want her to get pushed away. So I just decided to, you know, be friends with her and, you know, go and do things together. And, and which we did a lot. And then all of a sudden, one day, she wasn't around. And I couldn't figure it out. And somebody had told me that she was told that, well, is Billy your lesbian lover? And like I said before, she did not know that I was a lesbian. So she got scared off and, and took off. I mean, she was still on campus. I kind of knew where she was, but I didn't want to pursue it. You know, she's still in my heart. But then I figured, you know, I was in such this self-pity party that I really needed to get all of this, you know, frustration out. So <clears throat> I really started banging on the drums and um, I also just continued in the soccer and scored so many goals that I can't even remember. I stopped counting. Um, and single-handedly, I pretty much took the college to the state championships and got my name as the most valuable player on this big old trophy and stuff like that. But um, after college, I pretty much pursued playing the drums. And here I am today this drummer in this all-girl band and all my girls, they're beautiful and they accept me and um, we seem to really hit it off. You know, there's no ego when somebody's off or, uh, you know, it, it, whatever it takes, we all can stop and actually talk to each other without the egos getting in the way and to me that's like the best thing in the world and music is a passion of mine now. Now that I'm older, I'm really glad that I'm doing this now Whereas, like, going through life and not really pursuing it and having that regret that none of us want. Right, right. But that's my story. Thank you.
you've got a great support network. Man. Yes, for sure, for sure. Well, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank I you. can't wait to hear you pound All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right on. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really excited to do it. Great. All Thanks right. so much. You're welcome. Rock thank you. Woohoo! Okay, Jesus, I think we're done.
stone in someone's arms let them keep you warm love brings beauty and sorrow